Yesterday, 18th March 2022, Deputy President William Samoy Ruto took war to President Uhuru's village. Many people are wondering and asking, did William Samoy Ruto have to take his war, his campaign, right to Shaweri? What was his intention? Why would he go and face the president right in his own village? Many people are saying perhaps it was the ultimate, the ultimate Madarao, Utadu, that we have it. The mountain belongs to me. And now, by coming right up to your homestead, I want to leave no doubt whatsoever that I've taken over the mountain from you. I draw parallel with the Cuban Missile Crisis. For about one month and four days, on 16th of October to 20th or thereabout of November in the year 1962, the Russians took their missiles to Cuba. And there was a major standoff that almost turned the Cold War into an active war that almost turned the Cold War into a hot war, that almost pushed the world into a Third World War. President Kennedy asked the Russians to remove the nuclear stockpile, or they were going to face it. Indeed, there was going to be a Third World War. Russia withdrew the missiles. But perhaps unknown to many people, the Americans had provoked the Russians by also piling missiles in Turkey and Italy. So when the Russians withdrew from Cuba, the Americans in the deal also withdrew from Italy and Turkey. Fast forward, Russia is again attacking Ukraine. Why? America and her NATO allies have defied every agreement, every protocol. They have broken every promise they made to Russia about not moving next to Russia. So the main reason why Russia is in Ukraine and we don't support Russia, the 21st century was are to be avoided. Man has come this far. Man is so civilized to go back to the savage days when you settled your dispute by killing fellow men. But Russia is attacking Ukraine because America has defied everything agreed upon by trying to force Russia's neighbor Ukraine into NATO and pushing NATO weapons very close to Russia. So I draw a parallel to this. Why was William Samoy Ruto taking his missiles to Gatundu? Many people have said, like I've said before, that he wanted to, do, to show Uru Kenyatta who between the two is the king, that he was poking his finger into Uru's nose. That's what the people are saying. But I've seen something else. Because I kept asking myself, won't that be foolhardy? Won't it be counterproductive for Ruto to take the war right to, to Huru's doorsteps? Won't he run the risk of turning the tide against him? Of his people speaking out of turn and forcing the Kikuyu to protect their own son? I kept asking myself. But Kuria provided the answer. I submit, if our lawyer would have said humbly, that this meeting was stage managed, was put there intentionally so that Kuria would say the things he said. 
This meeting must have been put there intentional to make Kuria say the things he said. The things that are very difficult to repeat. And I think Moses Kuria must be told. Moses Kuria must be called out. Because it is people like this who can burn the country. I ask President Uhuru Kenyatta, like J.F. Kennedy, you must move into action. You are being nice, may cost this country. I address the president not as head of government, but head of state. There must be something you can do. Because this is dangerous. Let me explain. For those who think, I've read somewhere, I think somebody, some hustler, NIB man, Dennis, she says, somebody just pointing out. Yes, just pointing out. You can go to Germany and point out things, just point out, because they happen. You can point out certain things in America to do with the rest, just because they happen, yes. Just point out. I want to demonstrate that this is dangerous. Sometimes back, even after having said very bad things about the Luo people, Moses Kuria was in Iksumu. Perhaps out of Dutch courage, tall, huge, being mobbed by crowds in Iksumu. Very well, this is Kenya. We must move into this country freely. But let me ask you, with the political temperatures in the country today, and I want the intelligence people, if you ever listen, to tell the president this, because this is serious. Supposing with the same Dutch courage, under the current political atmosphere, supposing Moses Ukuria went to walk to Kisum. He went in Kisum town or somewhere like that, near there. With this temperature, with the things he has said, overzealous guys could do one or two things to him. And he would be back in 1969 after the death of Mboya. We know what happened. Some people did certain things to certain people in Kisumu. And as others did certain things to certain people in Kiambu. Even 2007, 2008, some people did to certain people certain things in certain corners of the country. In retaliation, other people did certain things certain We don't want to go there. I must say this at the risk of anything. Because we, this is our country, honestly. We must show love for this country. This kind of recklessness should not be allowed. Because it is dangerous. Countries have gone down for less. It's very easy to bring a country down. But to rebuild the country, generations can pass before you do it. The institutions responsible for law and order, for the administration of justice, have failed this country. Bodies like NCS are toothless. DCI, EACC, the judiciary, DPP, you have failed this country. People say these kind of things and they walk scot free. Sometimes you don't even charge them. Sometimes they are charged and the courts let them free. Oh, poor prosecution. We are setting up the country for failure and destruction. The judiciary is becoming the weakest link in the fight against impunity and even corruption. People still, the judiciary treats them just like they are very good fellows. People are jailed for long periods of time. The judiciary gives them bail and takes forever to process the, the appeal. The people now are applying to be members of parliament. The judiciary is failing this country. When such a people are brought before you, you must know you are handling the future of the country. It's in your hands. The purpose of the court is not just to be a betrayed dispute. It's also to address certain mischiefs. It's also to ensure that people don't do certain things. Even Vyoja Makaman, same educated people could see it, what the judiciary is not seeing. 
the judiciary must help us. Currently, we are electing thugs into parliament because the judiciary has refused to help us. When Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto wanted to stand in 2013, the judiciary, William Tunga and the rest, you chickened out. You flushed out chapter 6. When, an, when a petition was taken before Mtunga in 2013, with all the evidence, they chickened out. At that time, there was an outgoing president, and therefore nullification of the results, which was what should have happened, would not have caused any problem. Moreover, there were sections of people within government and outside government who were for another person to take power other than Akikui succeeding Kibaki. So there would have been peace even if you nullified the election. You chickened out. You threw chapter 6 through the window. Dito 2016, 17, when the judges could not appear in court to pronounce themselves on whether the repeat election would have been held or not. Currently, Justice Ngugi, we respect him so much. People go to court saying that the speakers should be stopped from declaring their seats vacant after they have closed, violated the law. The court say no. Speakers of 49 assemblies, all the 47 county assemblies, Senate and National Assembly, do not declare these seats. In violation of the law that is clear, where the law is clear, the judiciary doesn't want to help us. They go fishing where the law is not clear. So the judiciary is now telling us, it's all right for a member of parliament to violate the law, to ditch his party, and not leave the seat. The threshold is so clear, the law says, at some point, will be deemed to have, that is, the threshold is so low. And yet the court is telling us, let them continue being members of the county assembly, members of parliament, senators. Let them continue. The court indeed is now telling us, Justice Mother Kome, your court is telling Kenyans that an MP who has broken the law who should not be a member of parliament, should continue being a member of parliament. The court is telling us the poor Kenyan in Kibra, in Madare, in Korogosho, should continue fueling and maintaining that vehicle of that MP who should not be in parliament. That that miserable old woman in Luombe, where I come from, courtesy of her taxes through VAT and the rest, should continue paying taxes for members of parliament and members of county assembly who should not be there. That is what the court is telling Kenyans. That is impunity. That is what we are telling our children. And that is what could cause a problem in this country. The courts, the judiciary, must stop being the missing link in the fight against corruption and impunity. I say this with a lot of bitterness coming from my heart because I know Utterances such as those from Moses Kuria can burn this country. Utterances such as those from Linturi in Eldoret can burn this country. And we have to be careful. Because for 99.9% .9 of us, this is the only country we have. This is the only place we have. You can go to immigration, for example, and find out how many Kenyans even have a passport. Could it even be 1% of Kenyans with a passport? Live alone owning property. A few of us could have passports, but we, don't, we own nothing. We may not even afford a, a ticket. This is the only country we have. Let nobody want power so badly. Let nobody want to be president so badly that he can set up this country. That he can set up this country for destruction. Because I ask myself, so if you became president, if you became member of parliament, if you became governor, and there are no people to govern, so what, what was the point? What would be the point of being a president of a country that is destroyed? My challenge to presidential candidates like William Ruto and Raila Odinga, tame your soldiers. My challenge to William Ruto, come out and speak about what Moses Kuria said. My challenge to Raila Odinga, come out 
and speak on this Moses Korea thing. Your people are waiting. I read a tweet. Is it a tweet or a post? From Oburo Dinga. Oburo, I feel you. I could see the pain in that text. I could see the heart. And I prayed. Let this pain that I'm reading from Oburo Dinga. Let it be a pain carried by only Oburo Dinga and not a community. That pain should not be carried by a community. I feel the pain myself. And that's why I'm challenging Uhuru Kenyatta. As head of state, you must do something. Raila Odinga, as a person who represents those who have been hurt, you must say something. William Ruto, as a person who called a meeting, knowing too well this could happen, you owe Kenyans an explanation. You must do something about it. And for the agents and institutions responsible for the administration of justice in this country, if nothing happens to Moses Kuria, the curse of the generation will befall you. We will pray God that nothing bad happens in this country. But should anything happen, those of you who preside over the institutions, over the agencies are, that are supposed to ensure what happened in Gatundu yesterday doesn't happen again. Any one of you, from the Chief Justice, the Director of the Public Prosecution, Public Prosecution, Director of DCI, that's toothless NCI, whatever of Cobia, ESCC, all of you, the future is this country is in your hands. This is not a matter of which, over which you are going to play. We must see action. We must see action. Because we love this country. Thank you.